Hey boys and girls, moms and dads, grandmas and grandpas, anyone else who's watching this video. Today is an important day. Oh yes, it is Sunday. It's the day we worship the Lord, you know, at church. But, are you ready for this? It's February 14. That means it's Valentine's Day. I love Valentine's Day. I didn't always like it, but I do now. It's so much fun to celebrate people that you love. And I'm wearing my little hearts up here. And it's just a happy day to talk about love. Because I know you love to talk about love, especially the boys listening to me. You love, you love love. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You really don't like to talk about it. But it's Valentine's Day, so sorry. We're going to talk about it just a little. But you know, it is February. And love is not our theme for this month. Except for today, it is because it's Valentine's Day. But our overall theme for High Five for February is kindness. Remember, I told you it wasn't really love last week, but it's kindness. So, what is kindness? It is, you ready? Showing others they are valuable by how you treat them. Now, last week, I asked you to do something really hard. Do you remember? It was to be kind to people even though they're mean to you. And we talked about how hard that is to do, right? So, how did you do with that? Was it tough? Did you do a good job? Are you even listening and paying attention to me? I hope so. Hello, look. My little hearts do like them. Oh, look, they're fuzzy. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, how'd you do being kind to someone who's mean to you? Tricky, right? Okay, so I hope you at least did that. At least tried really hard. Today's lesson, today's challenge, it's even harder. Yep. I know there's not much harder than being kind to somebody who's not nice to you, but guess what? Today, oh, it's tricky. It's a hard lesson today, but we're not going to talk about it yet. No. Instead, let's talk about our memory verse. Okay, it's a long one. It's a doozy, but I know you can memorize it. All right, let's check it out. Colossians 3.12 You are God's chosen people. You are holy and dearly loved. So put on tender mercy and kindness as if they were your clothes. Don't be proud. Be gentle and patient. It says, don't be proud. Be gentle and patient. That's how you show people kindness. That's how you show people you love them. By being gentle and patient and cheering each other on. Remember, we're talking about being a super fan and how fans cheer on their team. And our job is to cheer on other people. Do you know who that includes those other people? You ready for this? Do you know who that includes? Your family. Huh? Your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, even that brother that really gets on your nerves. Or that sister that won't quit messing with your stuff. Yeah. Them too. Being kind to them. And that is really hard to do. Okay. All right. All right. Now, in honor of Valentine's Day, because in case you didn't know, that's today. So in honor of Valentine's Day, we are going to play a Valentine game. Oh, yes. Get ready. How many of you like to go grocery shopping? No. How many of you like, I don't really like to go grocery shopping. It's not my favorite. Does anybody like to go grocery shopping? Probably not. You might because you might think you're going to get something like ice cream or chips or candy or even a toy if you go to the right store. So when you're grocery shopping, you know, things have prices, right? Do you ever pay attention to those prices? Okay, in today's game, this is how it works. It's called Valentine Super Shopper Edition, okay, or something like that. Super Shopper Valentine Edition, okay? What you're going to do, this is how it works, is they're going to show some grocery items on the screen, and you have to guess if, like, for example, which item costs the most, okay? You have to guess. Or which item costs the least, 
okay and so there's quite a few little rounds so we're going to play and i want you to see how well you do guessing these valentine items that might be found at your nearest you know kroger or walmart or tar or target or probably not groceries on like the amazon okay because the zine probably doesn't have all these groceries i mean they might but anyway kroger walmart target places like that so pay attention make some good guesses and let's see how many we get right okay are you ready you got your thinking caps on i know it's a little early but go with me all right everybody ready you got it i got my valentine hearts i'm ready to play all right let's play super shopper valentine edition super shopper valentine's edition all right i hope you're ready for this grocery store game are you a super shopper hmm. i don't know if i am i guess i'll find out see if you can identify the less expensive item which item cost less which one costs less a cupcake or a mug a cupcake or a mug Mm, it might depend on where you buy the cupcake. At the grocery store, I'm going to say a cupcake costs less than a mug. $3 for the cupcake, $9.79. That is an expensive mug. The cupcake guess was correct. All right, one point if you got it right. Next one. Which one costs less? A bear or a balloon? A bear or a balloon? I'm going to go with the balloon. The balloon. I don't know, though. Five seventy six for the bear and two forty nine for the balloon. Did you guess the balloon? I'm sure you probably did. That one wasn't very hard. All right, next one. Which one costs less? I'm not helping you on this one. Stickers or a rose? You know, people like to get roses for Valentine's Day. Not me though. I'd rather get like candy or something because flowers die. St Oh, stickers. I bet most of you said stickers on that one. I told you I wasn't going to help you. All right, this one. Which one costs less? Less. A cookie? Are those conversation hearts? I'm not telling you. Do you like those conversation hearts, the hearts in the box? Some people really like them. Some people can't stand them. All right, let's see. Oh, 89 cents for the conversation hearts. You know, there was a time they didn't make those things. Okay, which one costs less? A heart straw or a heart sucker? Ooh, that's hard. I'm going to guess the straw. I'm going to guess a heart straw. I do not know the answer. What do you think? 99 cents for the straw. 59 cents for the sucker. I missed it. If you said the heart sucker, you are correct. All right, which one costs less? strawberries or a chocolate heart box oh this is a close one oh i'm gonna go with the chocolate heart box strawberries can be kind of expensive and those look really fancy 12.49 for the strawberries 8.99 for the box i was right ho oh, i hope you have a great valentine's day well how'd you do how'd it go pretty good did you get some right did you get guess the right prices now you get to go to the grocery store with your mom or your dad or your grandma or your sister or whomever you go shopping with and you can help them shop at the grocery store. It will be lovely. I'm just kidding. You'd probably rather just stay home or do anything else other than go to the grocery store. But anyway, all right. So we're going to take a break from Valentine's Day for just a minute. But we're still talking about love. And kindness, remember our big word, kindness, that's our theme for the whole entire month. All right, so our songs today, all right, are going to be about celebrating God's love to us. Because, think about this for a minute on this Valentine's Day, okay? The way that God shows His love for us, there's so many ways. But the ultimate example is that God sent Jesus to die on a cross for me and for you. Okay, and we say that all the time. Okay, you hear me talk about that all the time. But if you think about it for a minute, okay, Jesus was God's only son who died for me and you. The thing was, Jesus didn't do anything wrong. 
but he was sentenced to the death of a criminal and God let it happen because that's how much God loves you and that's how much God loves me so because of that we're gonna celebrate that today okay we're gonna we're gonna sing happily and we're gonna have a good time and we're gonna sing all about God's love and and we're also going to sing another song. It's our virtue song of the month about kindness. Okay. And it's about singing about how important it is to be kind to others, especially people who are different than us. All right. You got it. All right. So stand up this morning and let's sing together.
Sometimes it's really hard to show kindness, right? Last week we talked about how hard it was to show kindness from um, to someone who might make us mad or be mean to us and we're supposed to be kind to them and that's hard to do. But you know what? Here's another hard thing. Showing kindness to the people that are closest to us. Like our family that live in our house. Hmm. Why? Why do you think it's hard to show kindness to people that live in our house, to our family? Yeah, right, exactly, because we're around them all the time, especially in today's world with, you know, we can't go many places, and so you're around your family a whole, whole bunch, and frankly, you just get on each other's nerves. Okay, my little girl, my little boy, they're great. They're, they're fantastically wonderful children. And usually they play really well together. But sometimes they even get on each other's nerves if they're around each other for a long time. That's just how it goes. Okay, why else might it be hard to be kind to our family? Okay, because we're around them a lot. Yeah, we said that one. Maybe because you act like them. Think about your mom or dad for a minute, okay? Do you do you act like them, uh, like maybe like your mom more than your dad? Like your characteristics are kind of the same? Okay, like sometimes my daughter, she acts more like my husband than me. Or sometimes she acts like me instead of my husband. And when she acts like one of us, it's hard for the other, for that parent, they kind of they get in them struggle right so like she acts like my husband a lot and she and my husband mr brandon sometimes they hit heads like they they argue okay and they have disagreements and i have to be like whoa hold on we're not gonna do that all right so maybe it's hard to be kind to our family because we're so alike that's an that's a that's a reason but you know what maybe it's this maybe let's think about this is your family always going to love you? Your mom, your dad? Yeah. Uh-huh. So you know what? Because, I think because we know that they're always going to love us, that we kind of feel a little freer. We feel like we don't have to quite uh, try so hard to act kind. Because even when we're mean, they're still going to love us. All right, I didn't say that was the right thing to do. That's just a fact. Okay? They're always going to love us no matter what. And so we just kind of go about our day. And we're not so worried about it. Being kind. Huh. All right. Stick with me. Go get your Bible. Go fast. Get your Bible. We're going to the book of Ruth today. All right. Ruth. All right. Go get your Bible. And I'm going to get ready for the Bible story. Okay. Now, the book of Ruth is in the Old Testament. Right? So, Joshua judges Ruth. Okay. So get your Bible, kind of open it toward the front, and you might find the book of Joshua. Then you're going to go to Judges, which is kind of a big book. 
Then you're going to flip just a few pages. Don't flip too much. You'll pass it. And you're going to go to the book of Ruth. Now, we're going to talk about the whole book today because it's one big story. But, my friends, there's a lot of people in this story today. Okay? Ruth. In my Bible, it's on page 321. Hey, I told you it was close. All right? Now, Ruth is a story, true story, okay, in the Bible. Everything in the Bible is true. So, this is a true story about a family. Okay? Now, to help us illustrate these characters, I brought some friends with me today. Okay? I brought... All right, here's Naomi. Naomi, say hi. Hello. Okay, this is Naomi. Here she is. Can everybody see her? There she is, Naomi. All right, very good. This is Orpah. Not Oprah, but Orpah. Hello. Say hi. Hello. Okay, this is Orpah, this little, this little person right here. And then this one is, of course, we have to have our main character in the story right and her name is Ruth all right Ruth say hi hello okay so this is Ruth hello all right and then we have another dude but he's gonna come out in just a little while all right so let's go back to the book of Ruth okay let me introduce our characters all right Ruth and Orpah here all right these two ladies are the daughter-in-law of this older lady, Naomi. All right, here we are. Okay, so we have Naomi. See, she's older. She has gray hair. She's older. Okay, we have Orpah and we have Ruth. All right, they are a family. But see, here's the bad news about this. Okay, these three ladies are all married. Okay, Naomi's married. Okay, to a husband. She has a husband. She and her husband have two boys. All right, and they marry Ruth and Orpah. Okay, Ruth and Orpah. Now, something happens, we're not sure what, and the two boys, the husband of Ruth and the husband of Orpah, okay, they die. So that's Naomi's sons, right? So they die. Okay, so they're very, very sad. All right, so Naomi, not only do her sons die, but her, her husband also dies. Okay, so all the boys in the family have died. All right, I don't know why. It's kind of sad. Okay, so Naomi comes to these girls in the first part of Ruth, and she says, hey, girls, you can either go with me, or she says, I'll tell you what, just go back to your homeland. Go back to where you're from, and um, and I'll just, I'll just take care of myself. Basically, she was saying, I'm just going to, like, go in my house and never come out. She was really sad. Okay, so she said, y'all just go and I'll just be by myself. All right. Well, Orpa, she said, sure, I'm going to go back to my home. All right. So, so long, Orpa. All right. So she leaves. So that leaves Naomi and Ruth. All right. Now, pause. Look at Ruth chapter one. Okay. Ruth chapter one. And we're going to go to verse... Let's see here. How about we go to verse 16? All right. Chapter 1, verse 16. Let's read together. But Ruth replied, Don't try to make me leave you and go back. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. So Ruth said, Hey, Naomi, I'm just going to go with you. I'm going to take care of you. She didn't have to do that, but she was showing kindness to Naomi, her mother-in-law. Okay, and, and Naomi really cherished that. She thought that was really important. So, because Ruth chose to be kind to Naomi in this one part, a lot of cool things happened to Ruth and Naomi. Okay, and that's in our video today about Ruth's kindness to Naomi and what happened because of that. All right, so let's check out our video this morning. The Bible, it's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the Book of Ruth. In the land of Moab, there lived a young woman named Ruth. She married a man from Judah and must have dreamed of a large family and many children. 
We'll name them Zeke and Hannah and... But Ruth's happily ever after ended before it began. Her husband died and his brother too, and that left Ruth alone with her sister-in-law Orpah and her mother-in-law Naomi, whose husband died too. I have nothing left. Naomi had come to live in Moab during a famine in Judah, but she had gotten word that there was plentiful food in her homeland again, so she planned to take a road trip. Ruth, Orpah, go back to your family homes. May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown me. So Orpah kissed her mother-in-law and left, but Ruth wouldn't budge. I'm going with you. Look, your sister-in-law is going back to her people. Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Well, okay then. Finally, after a long and dusty journey, the two women arrived in Naomi's hometown of Bethlehem. Everywhere along the road, barley rippled in the breeze, golden and ready to harvest. Is that Naomi? She don't look so good. Don't call me Naomi. The Lord has made my life bitter. I went away full, and the Lord has brought me back empty. Don't listen to them. You just need dinner and a nap. Finding food was their top priority. Some of those barley fields belong to my husband's relative, Boaz. The grain is being harvested right now. Let me go to the fields and pick up the leftovers. Go, my daughter. The law instructed the landowners to leave behind some of the harvest for people who needed food. So Ruth followed behind the harvesters, gathering every bit of barley that fell to the ground. Barley. Let's see. You can barbecue it, boil it, broil it, saute it. Ruth worked hard in the heat of the day. In the afternoon, Boaz came out to survey the harvest. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. Boaz spotted Ruth hard at work and asked his overseer, Who is that young woman? She came back from Moab with Naomi. She asked if she could pick up the extra grain and has barely rested all day. Boaz was moved by Ruth's care for Naomi. He waded through the barley to speak with her. Stay here and follow along where the men are harvesting. I'll make sure no one bothers you. And when you're thirsty, you get a drink from the water jars. Why are you so kind to me, a foreigner? I've been told what you've done for your mother-in-law, how you left your homeland to come here. May the Lord reward you. Boaz offered Ruth bread and roasted grain to eat, and at the end of the day, she was able to bring a large amount of grain home to Naomi. So much food! Ruth continued to work in Boaz's fields until the end of the grain harvest, but even then, life would have been very difficult for two women living alone together. So Naomi laid out a plan for Ruth. I will do whatever you say. At the end of the harvest, the workers threshed the grain to separate the edible kernel from the straw. Then they held a big celebration. When the meal was over and the lights burned low, Boaz laid down near the pile of grain to sleep. Ruth arrived and approached Boaz just as Naomi had told her to do. She folded the blanket away from his feet and lay down nearby. <gasps> Who's there? It's me, Ruth. Please give me your protection since you're responsible for our family. Boaz was surprised, but what Ruth had said was true. The Lord bless you. Don't be afraid, I'll do what you ask. Everyone knows you are wise and kind. Even though Boaz agreed to help Ruth, there was a family member who was closer than Boaz. So in the morning, Boaz set out to meet that man and the town elders to settle the matter. I will buy Naomi's land and also marry Ruth, if you will let me. Well, I sure can't purchase Naomi's land and take care of my own land too. So we're good? Go right ahead. Today, you are all my witnesses that I will buy Naomi's land and marry her daughter-in-law, Ruth. As soon as it could be arranged, Boaz and Ruth were married. Naomi came to live with them, and a short time later, Ruth and Boaz had a new baby boy. His name is Obed. Aren't you the sweetest little thing? So through the kindness of Boaz and Ruth, Naomi had a brand new home and a brand new family too. Everyone could see the difference in her face. Praise be to the Lord. He's given you a new lease on life, Naomi. Yeah, that Ruth is better to you than seven sons. Now, Ruth's story doesn't end there. Her son, Obed, had a son named Jesse, who had a son named David. 
King David. And hundreds of years later, a new baby boy was born in Bethlehem who was a descendant of King David, and his name was Jesus. See, I told you, Ruth showed kindness to Naomi, right? She took care of her, okay? How? I know, it's a double-sided puppet, pretty cool. Okay, not the point. All right, so how, what are some ways that Ruth was kind to Naomi? Okay, she went with her to Bethlehem, that's right. What else? She collected the food, remember the grain on the, on the, uh, the, the floor of the field, right? Okay, what else? And she followed Naomi's plan to meet Boaz. I told you there was another person in the story. All right, hold on, Naomi, you have to go over here for a minute. I have to get our other little person. He's very important, okay? Boaz. All right, here he is. Hello. Okay, so Ruth and Boaz, well, guess what? They start noticing each other and hanging out, and they end up getting married. Oh. And what comes of this new family? Guess who comes of it? out of it. King David. We know about King David, but guess who else? On way on down the line. Way, 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 way. Guess, guess who comes out of Ruth and Boaz? It's his family tree. Guess. Jesus. Right. Jesus. Because Ruth and Boaz got married and they had kids and their kids had kids and on 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 and on. They are in Jesus' family tree. Now. If Ruth had not shown kindness to Naomi, this could have been a totally different story. So how important is it to me and you that we're kind to our family? Oh, it's very important and it's very hard to do sometimes. So our bottom line today is also our challenge and this is what it is. Be kind to your family and friends. Try real hard. Okay, make a lot of effort to be kind to them, to show them God's love, Valentine's Day, but to show them kindness and to take care of them because they're going to be your best friends, even your family members. They're going to be the ones to stick up for you. They're going to be the ones to take care of you. So you should show them kindness. All right, so let's pray this morning and ask God to help us do this very hard thing. Okay, dear God, we thank you for today. God, I thank you for our story of Ruth and Naomi and how Ruth showed kindness to Naomi. God, she didn't have to. She could have gone back to her own country. But God, she stayed with Naomi and was kind, even though it was probably hard to do. And God, I pray that you would help us to be kind to our family this week and kind to our close friends. God, it's hard because we're so comfortable around them and we're around them all the time that it's sometimes it's just hard to be kind. But help us this week to make the extra effort to show kindness to those we love the most. God, thank you for being kind to us and for sending Jesus to die on the cross for us. God, we love you. And thank you for this Valentine's Day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. That is it for this week with Ruth and Naomi. Have a very wonderful week. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Ruth, time bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody.